Well, hi, everyone, and welcome uh, to our, our panel discussion today on recruitment from a global talent pool. Uh, with the move to remote working, proving uh, that employers can actually be capable of working anywhere, resulting in localized workforce being able to expand nationally and internationally. We are going to take some time today to actually talk about what that means for future generations, you know, what the responsibilities are of the business uh, as we grow more globally and recruit uh, throughout the world. Uh, and what types of skills uh, we're looking to actually grow uh, at our workforce based on you know this this growth. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, I'm, I'll be your moderator. Uh, my name is Jeremy Corbett, and I am uh, senior director and global head of talent and partnerships here at M3. Uh, and I'm joined by three uh, talented leaders in the tech space. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to to hand it off to to you three. Uh, Honey, do you mind kicking us off with introductions? Of course not. My name is Honey Ajion. I am head of um, technology for Capital Markets in NatWest Markets, which is a subsidiary of NatWest Group. Great. Ollie? Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks, thanks, Honey. It's great to be here. My name is Ollie Monks and I manage the TechNation visa. Um, for those of you who haven't heard of it, it's, it's the closest thing at the moment to the UK's tech visa. So I can speak as well about everything we've done internally and also from what we're seeing in the UK's tech sector too. So looking forward to being part of the conversation. Over to you, Gail. So I'm Gail Bristian and uh, I'm the head of the technology office in, in Americas. Uh, and I'm working for Amadeus, uh, that is uh, providing IT solution for the travel industry. So you may not know it, but uh, every time you book a ticket, you search for a flight, uh, you board a flight, uh, a lot of the technology is coming uh, from Amadeus. Great. And I think that's a perfect segue as well, Gail, just like given the, the notifications popping up and all the different sounds and uh, things that are happening behind us as we're working remotely. We'd love just to throw it out there. How are things going overall for you, for you three? You know, what's it been like working remotely the last 18 months? Um, Ollie, do you mind kicking us off? Yeah, I, mean, so I actually um, I actually moved into our job during this last 18 months. So I've gone through that experience of what it means to, to move jobs to. It's been a really interesting time. Um, I think from us, from a tech nation perspective, we've been really well equipped to handle it. I think a lot of our, our team were already working quite remotely. So the transition in a lot of ways was smoother than some industries, although we do a huge amount of kind of programs and delivery working with tech scale ups in the UK and had a huge amount of uh, in person events lined up and had to transition really quickly. So that took some time. Um, but it's been, yeah, it, it's been really interesting. I think, you know, we were saying even before this call that it will probably not go back to to normal or whatever it was before the pandemic. I think that seems to be almost a cliche now, but everyone seems to get that. But what the next steps will look like are a bit of an unknown. Um, and we're in, we're in flux, I suppose, as a, as a company where we're still kind of working out what's, what's best for us as a team, what's best for us as an organization as we grow. Um, and no one, I think the best thing is no one's kind of pretending that they have all the answers. Yeah. Um, and I think taking that approach has really helped the whole team and everyone we work with as well. Great. Yeah, so I, I think uh, I, we share a lot uh, and I share a lot of, uh, of what Oli just said in terms of, you know, actually how the team have been quickly adapting to the new reality we had to live in. Uh, so from one week to another, the whole workforce moved from fully being in the office to fully being remote. And actually, we were quite, you know, uh, impressed somehow on how people have been able to adapt to that. Uh, I think we are discussing before the call, it has given the opportunity as well, you know, and personally for me uh, to work a bit in the work-life balance in some way. Uh, I think that was good and bad, uh, you know, because you have always your computer next to you. Uh, but in the other end, you have more time as well to be with the family and so on, so sometimes maybe too much time. Uh, and But it, it was great and we have all the experience of, you know, seeing people in call with their cats, with their dogs, with their, you know, kids. And I think it has created a bit of relationship in the time we all needed that as well. Uh, so I think all in all, uh, my, my uh, summary of uh, the last 18 months was uh, a lot of challenges, but that was leading to a lot of opportunity as well uh, that uh, we just need to, you know, foster with the team and, and ourselves. Yeah, on um, 
on our side, it was quite interesting. Um, one of the great things was it basically democratized the fact that if you're working across the world, generally in the past, our colleagues in other parts of the world, maybe in the Americas or in India, would be on the other side of the screen. And it just felt that the relationship wasn't the same with all teams remotely. So now everyone is experiencing the same thing. And I think because of that, there's kind of um, more empathy in terms of how we're going to be communicating with each other. But the biggest thing for me in my team was the fact that we're growing. So I've been hiring at quite a high rate and having to onboard people remotely and interview people remotely and then have people start delivering remotely has been a challenge for a few people. But for people who have been more seasoned in their career, a bit easier. But because I am very much about developing talent, so we've got quite a number of apprentices in the team. That's been very, very challenging for them because a lot of them expected that they're going to come into the office suited and booted, looking amazing, and they're just <laughs> stuck in their childhood bedroom with a sibling and having to do the work. So that's been challenging for them. But what we try to do is keep it, um, keep it fun, keep it fresh, get to know each other better and play a couple of online games, so Among Us and things like that. So that's how we've been finding it and coping with it on my end. Yeah, honey, that's that's a, a good point there too. I think sometimes you, you hear like the New York centric or the London centric, you know, London centric, and it's like, that's like what runs the business. And then now it is like, oh, everyone talks to everyone, everyone's remote. There is no more of this remote only, you know, those folks are remote only or whatever. It's like all of us are. <laughs> which is, yeah. is quite a change. Um, I think what we've seen as well uh, is, uh, you know, just like a meeting together online and so on, people have difficulty to talk and to contribute when a lot of people were in one room and few people were, you know, uh, remotely contributing. And so I think it has actually been a good education for the people that are usually the one in the room to figure out that actually being uh, in a virtual environment and so on is not that easy sometimes. Uh, and you need to leave the space of the people. So it has actually as well made people work better, I think, together uh, across all the, you know, region, site, city, and so on, uh, by forcing everyone to be at the same level, let's say. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a big equalizer from, uh, from that perspective. No, that's great. And honey, like touching on your point there around, you know, using, a, uh, was it Among Us? Is, was that the game you guys are playing as well? Would you do you think like that we ever will get to a point where we, you people will want to go back in person and like you know we need that we need that aspect of our of our work or do you think that remote only can stay forever like what 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 are all your thoughts on on that for me I think hybrid is the future I don't think it's going to be solely remote and I don't think we can go back um, and I think um, I'm not the only one to say hybrid is the future I think from my perspective when I look at my team. There are some people in my team who are the more seasoned, the veterans, I call them, who are chomping at the bit to go back into the office mm -hmm. because they love the vibe. They just love the different ways of sharing ideas. And there are a number of other people in my team who are quite happy to just step foot into the office maybe once a month. But what I have noticed is that um, us veterans, so a um, few seasoned ones <laughs> who have a, who've maybe had maybe more than 10, 15 years of our career, seem to be a bit more comfortable with working remotely. But the younger people in my team are particularly frustrated because they don't get to see senior leaders. They don't feel that they have a clear idea of how to manage their careers. So um, what we're looking to do with that hybrid is to ensure that we're able to support our team members who don't want to come into the office that frequently. So maybe they'll come in a minimum of maybe twice a month. And then the people who do want to come in frequently, because it is hybrid, maybe coming into the office two, three times a week. So that's how we're looking to manage it from my perspective. I think that's, I think that's super interesting. I think that's one of the biggest challenges in it now, because there's such a wide spectrum for people of what people want from work, what they're going to get. Some people are in their role at the early stages of your career, like you mentioned, Honey, who really just are in development phase. They just want to learn as much as they can, get that next opportunity. And then some people who we work with, I think particularly within tech, right? All you want is effectively to be left alone. I need my deep work phase 
this is the dream. No one has to contact me. I control anyone who comes in and out and that's it. And I think how companies are going to be able to build kind of future workplace and what it looks like, which accommodates all of those people into one space is going to be a really kind of big challenge. I think, you know, we um, we've had it internally ourselves where we've now got um, I think almost hardly anybody wants to go in five times a day anymore, a week, sorry, um, anymore. That seems to have been completely gone. I think you're in the minority now if that's what, how you feel and how do you accommodate people, people who do want to do that. Um, I, I think one thing that's been interesting in the conversations we've seen is as much about how much you want to be in the office as about what kind of work do you want to be doing when you're there. Um, you know, sometimes we've been going into the office now over the last few months, but you want to spend your whole time in a phone booth because still once you're in the office, you're on Zoom calls or team calls or whatever it might be the whole time anyway. How is that any better from just working from home? But then there's some really interesting um, type of work, I think, within anything that's an innovation in the broadest of senses where you want to be coming up with more creative ideas. And I think there's a lot of studies been done into that where it, you generally are more effective at doing that when you're in the same physical space as one another. So how do you kind of replicate that? Will there ever be a better alternative than just having people in that same space? And so and I've seen there's other new kind of technologies coming out trying to make that those situations which I think will arise more and more in the future where you might have a call that we're on now and there's four or five people that join from all around the world and then there's three people that are in the meeting room in one space and how do you kind of make those meetings flow in a way and I, they're not quite there yet I think so there's yeah it's a really interesting one to see I think that's in terms of the type of work and type of teams are really going to vary I think within companies who benefits from that. Yeah I think we, we see exactly the same is that actually we have done some survey as well to, to the people to understand how much they wanted to go back to the office and so on and yes we see like the five days per week you have few people that actually want uh, mm -hmm. but it's really the minority of the people and the challenge is how you make a working environment that is flexible enough and fitting in the needs of everybody because some people really need this kind of connection physical connection and actually we have seen in some of our latest like engagement results and so on that some see the fact they cannot meet physically as a barrier for them uh, to do their work to progress to to move on uh, to innovate as well i think we have seen that you know the team known each other very well when the whole you know pandemic situation started and they were forced to work from home so they had this connectivity they had you know this great relationship new people coming in uh, onboarding uh, getting this relationship to the team is extremely hard when people have no opportunity at all to to meet together uh, and i think it's really as well how you create the office space attractive so people will actually want to go there but as well different than before if the, it's back to the phone booth or sitting at your desk every day uh, the, the goal and what we are looking at as well is reviewing the office space itself like creating more collaboration space in the office um, or small discussion room because that's what the people really it will be the collaboration space like innovation ideation we need to get together to figure things out we need to exchange uh, we need to have small coffee as well. I think, uh, you know, break and corner and discussions that a lot of people have missed because it's where, you know, great idea and great things start uh, as well. So it's really how we rethink this whole environment. So people working from home, working in the office or a mix uh, can really get what they need uh, from each of the space they are working on. Uh, being uh, either, as Oli was saying, you know, I want to not be disturbed. I want to be in my zone. I want to just develop and then I, I stay home and I'm, I'm happy. Uh, or actually I'm stuck. I really need the help of other people. I want to discuss uh, where could I go and how can I you know, go to the office and find people that will help me to, to move on. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. It's, uh, it's changing quite a bit now. And I think you know if hybrid is the answer, I guess, the next question for you all is around like that kind of opens up the talent pool quite a bit more for us globally. You know, what what are you doing? What are your, your companies doing to, you know, access and, and recruit? I think that larger pool of talent now that, that's available. Yeah, maybe I can start. So we've been always a global company, so we have always tapped into the global pool. So I think from that perspective, it does not necessarily change too much for us. Uh, it just changed 
I think the expectation of the people uh, and the fact that uh, you know it will be extremely hard as we were saying to try to recruit uh, a new talent today in the company by telling him you need to sit five days in the office uh, every week of the year. Uh, I think it's nobody will go for that. Uh, so I think it's adapting and getting the flexibility uh, on on the workforce and being able you know to compete on the market because. I believe, uh, and I think uh, Honey and uh, Oli may, may comment as well, uh, at least on like some profile like software development and so on, uh, there is a huge demand right now because a lot of the company as well needed to go digital, needed to offer more, you know, self-service uh, capabilities uh, that need obviously to be powered by, uh, by some software. And therefore, we see a high competition uh, in, in the market. Uh, we are really, I think, uh, what is a make and break is what can you offer in terms of flexibility uh, for these people to be able to work the way they want. Uh, and then it's a challenge on how it matches with the existing workforce you have that may not have the same culture, that may not have the same way of working, and how you, you enable uh, this transformation that uh, really, I think, we are just at the beginning of it, uh, but that's really where I, I see the challenge. Yeah, for us, it's quite um, interesting because when we talk about, you know, almost having the whole world open to you, I think sometimes we forget that um, for a few businesses, they're curtailed by um, tax implications. There's mm -hmm. some that where you're, you're also curtailed in terms of the geographical areas you can go into. And then there's also time zone differences as well. But for me, what I find quite interesting is the fact that um, what this new remote working is likely to do to the workforce is going to be, you basically go where the talent is. So the organization I work for is very much UK based, but there's a limitation to the amount of software developers and engineers that we, we actually produce. So I suppose this would make it a lot more flexible, but with that in mind as well, thinking about different labor markets and different economies, there are going to be some, there is going to be some pushback where people are going, well, does this mean that you're basically taking the best talent from other countries as opposed to investing in your own country and then wage disparities and things like that. So there's a wider conversation that could be had as to the opportunities that we're going to be getting from this working remotely, but then also economic and social aspects of it as well. I think that's a really interesting point. I agree with, with what you've both mentioned there as well. And I think one of the things that is also changing, I mean, right now, um, companies have to work, particularly in the tech space, right, have to work even harder now, I think, to make the case. You know, Gal, you mentioned earlier around thinking about your like, own work-life balance. I think people are really, really kind of valuing that even more than they ever have before the pandemic about actually what is it I want from my job? What is my kind of day-to-day -day going to look like and you have more options in terms of the what companies are putting out there than, than ever before and I think also twins with that you've got I think it was going this way anyway before the pandemic but even more um, from a values perspective everything else is going on around the world will I find somewhere that's going to you know represent it or am I going to be happy to to be associated with this company I think more and more companies are having to make their case more proactively than ever and I think if I can go a bit more macro in the role that I'm in as well, we get to see everything else from a kind of UK perspective and everything else that's going on with that. And we sit in that situation, honey, you mentioned it, right, where there's this balance for the UK, absolutely for the growth of the tech sector here. We just simply right now don't have enough people with the right skills to fuel that in all the organisations. So we inevitably have to, to kind of fit in the short term immediate, find great international talent and whether that's, from that remote perspective that you guys have mentioned and you employ them where they are or you try and make the case for the UK for them to move to the UK and live and work here and contribute that way but then we have to make sure we don't do that to the detriment of upskilling a lot of fantastic talented people we already have in this country and trying to strike the balance but you know we've from an international talent perspective seen it you see the growth of the UK's sectors fintech is the obvious one to mention has grown hugely particularly in London but around the UK you know, um, cybersecurity, other areas, health tech, you know, the, the route we see, it's all kind of two, three, four X the amount of people that are coming in from different talent hubs 
into the UK and that's great we want to see that continue um, but then there's also a lot we have to do to retrain people and where do we kind of have um, the ability to do that. It's a really interesting time, I think, to be talking about this stuff. One thing maybe I wanted to add as well, and uh, maybe that I hope actually this whole situation will enable is uh, bringing a bit more diversity into the workforce as well. We were talking work-life balance, uh, and okay, I'm a woman, so maybe I will make the point. Uh, mm -hmm. but obviously, I'm hoping it will bring as well, you know, some of the barrier uh, for some of, you know, Uh, people that you know want to have kids and so on uh, to keep their job uh, to be in the workforce uh, to to as well maybe look at careers that we are maybe not considering before uh, and I would you know uh, say that's probably one positive that I, I really you know would like to see and from the feedback of the people and we are discussing a lot that uh, You know, it's something everybody has seen that when you don't commute, when you can take a bit more time at home and so on, it's much easier to, to do a lot of, of things that uh, before seems to be impossible. Uh, so, so that's really, I would say, my, my wish, uh, not only like global international talent, but as well just more diversity uh, within the existing uh, population of the, of the various countries. I would, for 10 seconds, just echo that uh, mm -hmm. as loudly as possible. I think that is hopefully one of the real kind of shining lights or silver lining of everything. Absolutely, from a gender perspective and tech, from an ethnicity perspective, I do a lot also within disability and neurodiversity. And I think there's a real opportunity now and companies are better equipped than ever before to kind of get the people's lives going on behind the screen in their workplace and what that means and accommodating for that. Um, so we have a real opportunity to do that. And that's the thing, you can start to appreciate that if you're a hiring manager and building your teams. Um, we are surrounded by amazing kind of untapped talent pools, right? If you can, if you can flex. But, oh, honey, I can see you want to come in. The pass it over to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look, you, it's almost like preaching to the choir here because <laughs> this is why I'm also so passionate about apprenticeships as well and mm -hmm. why we always look to get apprentices into our teams And we, in the organization I work for, we have our apprenticeships um, stream. We also have our social mobility apprenticeships um, stream. Going to what you were talking about, Oli, about the fact that there's a lot of talent. And a lot of the time, sometimes, <laughs> we may not always look at it from that perspective. And one of the silver linings of um, this tragedy, well, there's been a couple, but one of the silver linings has been the fact that um, we now get the opportunity to actually look around and see that that talent, we can really, really tap into it. And it doesn't always look the same. And it doesn't always mean being able to come into an office. Um, mm. Those skills have always been there. And it took a tragedy for us to actually realize it. And I'm hoping that this gives us, as organizations, um, an opportunity to reflect and go, what does talent look like to you? What do skills look like to you? What are the things that you can do as an employer to add value? Because it's not always an extractive process. Um, so those are a number of things that we're learning at our organization as well. I'm going to Gail's point about work-life balance and um, getting to know the human. I think it's been so, so profound because previously the idea of professionalism was very, very narrow. And now we realize that you're a person doing a job and working remotely really, really brings that home. I've got to meet so many people's families. Um, mm -hmm. I've got to meet so many people's pets. And that is really, really crucial, bonding as human beings in the workplace. And the fact that by working remotely, we're able to do that more effectively is a bit of an eye opener to me. Yeah, no, definitely, honey. Um, and those are all really great points and perfectly aligns and pivots to the next discussion point, which we've kind of touched on a little bit and probably goes hand in hand. But once we get these really amazing people, um, you know, into our organizations, we're hearing the great resignation is happening right now and people are resigning at a very high level. You know, what do you all do to kind of retain these these wonderful people? And does that tie also into the retraining and reskilling piece as well to, to keep them? I don't know who wants to hop in first. Ollie's ready. <laughs> so one of the things 
in my organization is that we want to be an organization that is very difficult and hard to leave. Mm -hmm. And that is because we look at things through a range. I know that there's some people who may go, well, it's just about the money. We know that's not true. We know that it's about the relationships and also the ability for people to reach for a purpose much higher than themselves and also fulfill their own requirements as to what they think they want to achieve. So because of that, as an organization, the first thing is our purpose. What are we here to do? We're not just here to make money. We're not just here to make a profit. What value are we adding to society? That's the main thing. And then you as an individual, how do you self-actualize? What is going to make you happy? What do you feel your individual purpose is? How do we align that to what we are looking to do as an organization? And also, are we interacting with you respectfully, looking at you as an individual that are making you feel seen? I think all those in tandem really, really helps in ensuring that you have a sticky colleague where they don't want to leave. And working remotely is really, really bringing that to the fore. And if you're not really thinking about that, um, it makes it very difficult for you to retain people. So in terms of an individual getting to that self-actualization phase, a lot of it is trying to understand what really motivates the individuals in your team. In my team, we tend to do that as well. And we don't just do that on a one-to-one -one basis. We also do it as a broad te team as well. So people don't feel as lonely in terms of, yes, we have my team is in technology, so developers just want to shut the door and do all that. But we know that you cannot do great things in isolation. So when people need to reskill, when people are thinking of um, additional skills that they want to add to their bow, we have that conversation, see how it benefits them as an individual in terms of what they're looking to pursue and also how it will benefit us as an organization. So that's how we are kind of managing that aspect of it. Great. Yes, I wanna, you go, you go, go. Yeah, we were before about, you know, uh, flexibility as well and, you know, listening to the needs of the people that are evolving, I believe, in, in this new situation as well. So I think the critical piece is really, you know, how you collect that feedback as well from the people, how you continue to listen to them uh, and how you, you know, find what will make the working environment a better place overall. I, I would love to have a silver bullet uh, for retention, uh, mm -hmm. but that is not. So it's kind of a continuous uh, kind of a battle is maybe not a very positive word, but uh, you know, work and uh, importance uh, that you need to bring to, to that. Uh, and I, I mean, we are discussing the retraining, the upskill, new interesting projects and how you bring the dynamics in the teams are important. I think we have seen and, and we are discussing a bit before that some of the relationship in the team have been weakened sometimes by not being together, by being still remote and so on, even if I bring some other things closer because we know more about effectively and I go back to what Ronnie was saying about the person behind the screen. Um, sometimes the way we were, you know, celebrating events, uh, we were having team events together, all these things, at least for a while there was really nothing. So we had to learn you know, how to have some game, how to have virtual events, virtual coffee, virtual happy hour, everything you want like that. Uh, it does not fully replace uh, being together, uh, but at least try to mitigate a bit and, and bring the people along because yes, what people stay because they like what they do and they like the people they are doing it with. Uh, so that the two components you need to to make sure that people still find in their in their day to day, uh, and there is obviously challenge uh, in the current environment to do that. So that's something we are I, I, we are still learning and and trying to tackle that uh, on our side. Mm -hmm. I uh, really love listening to both of that. So I will not add too much from our own because we are really similar with that and that, that culture and that listening and giving people the flexibility in your organisation is hugely what we value as well internally. I will add only a little bit, I suppose, on a different angle um, from a more UK tech sector perspective and what we're seeing um, and that kind of migration and flow of international talent that comes in and out of 
not just the UK, but from could be from Europe to Americas to um, to Asia to Africa. I think it's again, it's trying to give people that pathway, looking at people's options in that medium to long term. Where do they want to go? We've spoken a bit about those people at the early start of their career, but those who maybe I don't know five, ten years into their career, and more than that, who might be beginning to have their their families, or you know, it's not just necessarily themselves they're considering anymore it's about you know what, what are their partner's aspirations or their family and things like that and I think we see a lot of people that come through and um, apply for our visa are actually already in the UK um, but it might be that for whatever reason they're just looking for a new opportunity or they actually they want to set up their own business or they want to go and work in a different sector or at a new organization and I think from a country perspective and more wider culture we've really got to give people the opportunity and kind of mechanisms to do that um, and making sure, and I think companies have some involvement, it's not all, all their responsi responsibility to really make sure we're integrating people from different, whether it's people coming uh, from abroad or from different demographics that we've spoken about already, properly feeling integrated where they're at um, and give them that motivation and feeling that they belong in their communities with it. You know, if we suddenly say, hey, that's great, come and move and move your whole family from the other side of the world to this company and then we just put them in a hotel for two weeks and say you know good luck then they are not going to stay around that's a really rough deal so really trying to think about them beyond just their role how can we really help them feel um as kind of yeah valued and integrated as possible and i think that gives you to the points we had before the best chance of having the most productive person in your team anyway and someone who's, who's been really willing to to stay uh, at your company for as long as possible so we're kind of seeing that a lot the more we can try and integrate them and I think it's an important thing for the UK right there's so many headlines that have probably been written <laughs> over the last few years it's a really important thing that we all try and kind of um, value and prioritize for um, for international talent especially that's great yeah and, and um, I have to say honey like the sticky employee now I feel like that's <laughs> We should have a whole panel about how do you how do you create the sticky employee? I love I love that. It's a it's a future book I think already uh, in, in the works there. Uh, definitely. Um, I know we're we're almost coming up here on time, so I, I just wanted to um, maybe wrap us up with with the last topic here around you know what does this all mean for future generations? You know this this new working world that we have that's so so globally stretching and the retaining and retraining that you know is available now that we can do but what does this you know this new world mean for the future who wants to kick us off with that i think and uh, knowing we we will probably run uh, quickly out of time to be yeah. quick I think it's, a, <laughs> it's a much bigger uh, opportunity for them like they can choose from a lot more option i believe uh, than uh, previous generation could both from where they are working, how they are working. Uh, if they want to change their career, as uh, Holly was mentioning, you know, in the middle and decide, you know, I want to retrain myself and completely change and so on. I believe there will be a lot more opportunity. I believe as well, you know, they are a lot more tuned to the technology and so on. So it's easier as well for them to enter the workforce uh, in a period where a lot of things are remotely and so on. That's maybe more the existing people in the workforce that need to adapt a bit. So I think there is a big change management uh, in organizations that need to happen to integrate them. Uh, but for me, and I have kids, so it's kind of close to my heart as well to think that uh, it will be really a world of opportunities for them. Uh, and that's how I, I, I want to look at it right now. I'll go next. So I'm, I'll leave the next bit. I think Honey will be so good at the final message for this. So I'll get, I'll get no pressure, Honey. Uh, um, I will, from my perspective, I would say there's just no greater kind of time. I suppose it's, it, it's such an exciting period. If you're looking at this from your own job perspective, or if you're looking at this and you're already growing a team and you're looking about who you could be bringing in to build that team and grow what you're doing, that there genuinely could be no better time. That you talk about the winding of the net. You can now realistically look to any talent hub across the world um, and bring people in and that could be as global or it could be as local to Hani's point earlier as possible as well because there are just on your doorstep lots of really untapped talent sources and I think who the people who are, are accessible to you who you could bring in has never never been more reachable um, in, before ever um, and I find that opportunity to be so exciting um, so that would that would be my final my final thing. Um, 
be proactive um, from your own career and your own discovery, your own development, and also in who you're bringing into your team as well. And um, hopefully, this is my day job, I have to say it, you do that within the UK. It's a great place to do it. But <laughs> honey, over to you. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much. I, I don't know what I could possibly add to what yourself and Gael have stated, except maybe to say that um, not only is it an exciting opportunity, but I think you can also ask for more um, mm -hmm. as a younger person. You can now be very clear as to what you want to do, um, how you want to impact the world. And there's so many organizations that are actually very clear in what it is they're looking to do. And you can do that. Um, one thing I never um, had the opportunity to do when I was growing up was to actually have a kind of plethora, a choice of mm -hmm. where I could go. It was very limited. And not only that in terms of um, the organizations, but also the type of path we take into it. When I was growing up, even though I've got to say I'm looking quite fresh and well-preserved, um, <laughs> uh, the only choice really was um, going on to the graduate scheme. Um, Entrepreneurship wasn't always the option then. Neither were things like apprenticeships. Neither were there even opportunities to actually always learn a bit more whilst you're also working. So really, the world is your lobster, as um, Arthur Daly would say. And um, there is nothing you can't do in this new environment. And just take every, every opportunity that comes your way. That's great. Great way to end. Well, Gael, Ollie, Honey, thank you all so much for, for hopping on today and, and discussing this in more detail. I know we could go probably two or three hours on the topic and plenty more questions to be asked, but uh, it was great to get to know you all so much and uh, take this time together. And to all those people out there, thanks for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed the conversation. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Thanks, everyone.